All right, welcome to our podcast on the literary term of hyperbole. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at what that is. So what exactly is a hyperbole? Well, first off, let's go ahead and look at its root. And we get the root of hyper, which means above or beyond. And so some other words that have this same root in them that show that something is above normal might be hyperactive, somebody might be hypercritical, somebody might have hyper irritability. And for those of you that are Star Trek fans, we might have a hyperdrive. In all of those words cases, basically whatever hyper is stuck to means that it is above and beyond the norm. So someone who is hyperactive has way more activity than any normal person should. So the root of hyperbole is also that of hyper, which means above and beyond. And so we can see that a hyperbole is a figure of speech that uses incredible exaggeration or overstatement to make a point. And so why would authors choose to use hyperbole? The biggest reason is to make a point. They want to draw the reader's attention to something by adding emphasis. Maybe they are trying to show rather than just tell. Oftentimes, hyperboles tend to be more on the humorous side. And so the author has chosen to make their point not just through telling, but more through showing and this idea of gross exaggeration. The other big reason that authors use hyperbole, or any of these literary terms that we're looking at, is definitely to help reveal the theme of the text. And again, if the theme of a text is that authors comment about life, about being human, about trying to survive in the world, we should start to notice when and where that author is using hyperbole. Where are they exaggerating? That will help us figure out what they're trying to say about life through their text if we can track when they exaggerate or perhaps who exaggerates in terms of a character or perhaps who is the recipient of that exaggeration. But again, the first step to moving to that interpretive level is definitely to start at the literal level, which is just the idea of identifying them. Then once we establish patterns, then we can move into the so what phase. So why is this important? Again, we need to start looking at the literal level of what we're reading. We must start to identify what is a literal retelling of an event or a description of something and what is a figurative or metaphorical exaggeration. Where is the author taking something and blowing it way out of proportion? These are the things we need to look at first at the identification or the literal level But then we need to track them, keep an eye on them, and see if we can figure out a pattern as to why and when they're being used so we can perhaps use those to help us deduce or figure out the themes of the text, what the author is trying to say about life. So this first one comes from Elizabeth Browning. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. Now I understand this person may love somebody. But to say that she loves somebody with all of all of these things, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration. Here's another example. This little world of mine has lost its light. And again, I get it. You can be sad. You can have had a hard day. You could have had some bad stuff happen to you. But to say that your entire world has lost all of its light, again, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration. But again, the point is, what is this author doing? She is drawing attention to this grand feeling that she is having. She doesn't just say or tell us that she's sad. She is truly showing us how sad she is and then taking it to that next level with some exaggeration. A robin redbreast in a cage sets all heaven in a rage. I can understand people being upset about animals in cages. I can understand people being upset at mean things that might happen because of being in a cage. But I have a hard time believing that all of heaven is going insane crazy because one bird is in a cage. Now again, William Blake is trying to make his point. Let's keep all the animals free. Let's not imprison any of them. He's trying to say we need to keep them free. 
How is he doing that? He's showing us what would happen or what he thinks would happen or what he proposes might happen if animals become locked up, that the entire world and heaven would be enraged at this. So as you look at the next couple ones here, see if you can stop the podcast and see if you can find the hyperbole. Where have these authors tried to show us their feelings by the help of exaggeration? As you are wrapping up, see if you can practice a little bit with your own. How could you finish these sentence starters with some hyperboles? Don't just tell us you're thirsty. How can you show us? And then how can you take it to the next level and show us how exceptionally, ridiculously over-the-top thirsty you are? How can you take it to the next level by the use of hyperbole? So go ahead and stop this and do a little practice with these. As always, please bring in your questions and your notes and additional thoughts on these. We will start to practice these right away. Thanks so much for listening. And if you have any questions, bring them in and we will see you in class. Thanks a lot.